There are 24 finalists competing to be the 2013 EY Entrepreneur of the Year. This is the real boss. I have been traveling the country to meet all of them. Irish companies can compete with the best. There's really nowhere we can't go. I complete my journey this week with the nominees in the international category. If you can't give back, you might as well give up. Well, we in EY set up the Entrepreneur of the Year programme to acclaim these phenomenal business leaders, to build a community of entrepreneurs where they could actually collaborate together, share ideas and grow their businesses and compete globally. With the awards night coming up next week, a panel of judges have been deliberating on the shortlisted candidates in three separate categories, emerging, industry and international. And from those three winners, they will choose who will be named the 2013 Entrepreneur of the Year. It's always tough to pick a winner. They're, you know, hugely impressive. What intrigues me, what surprises me year after year is the increasing uh, quality of the people that come through. I am Porik Okeja and as chair of the judging panel, I'm traveling all over the island to meet with this year's finalists. This week, we feature eight entrepreneurs competing in the international category. First stop on my journey is Adair in County Limerick. Samuel Chine established the Samco company in 1997 and invented a three-in-one machine designed to facilitate the growth of maize in less than favorable climates. As the global market for the machine continues to grow, Samco tests and develop a range of degradable film types to suit varying climates. Sam still runs his business from the farm on which he grew up. I'm just getting ready now for a very, very important board meeting with Granny. How are you guys? This is the real boss. This is the real boss. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. Can I call you Granny? Yes, Granny. <laughs> Everybody calls you Granny? Yes. Well, we're here drinking tea or coffee. Every morning we have to do that religiously at half ten. Uh, mother has the kettle on. If we're not in at half ten, she's out in the office. Because it's a family business, I try to allow each member of the family to have their own attribute or contribution to the company, and I have to listen to that. And, of course, Granny will always put her spiff in anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> you like them to go then? <laughs> you like them to go then? Yes, yes. The meeting is over. The and... meeting is over then, yes. Tell me a little bit about exactly what you do here. So our system warms the ground, so we're using a degradable film to lay on the fields, so we're sucking the sunlight, UV heat to the soil, so we're encouraging the roots and the development of the crop underneath the film, so it's like a mini glass house. We can see the Samco system here today with the maize growing under the degradable film on this, and then we can see growing without the Samco system, which is much smaller, lower yielding. 90% of the business in sales is the selling of the film and 10% is the machines. A big part of our business is advice to the end user. So we follow that very, very well with people on the ground every day. In the business with the machine, it's, it's a complicated machine, but we ensure it and design it and manufacture that it's bulletproof because uh, we send machines so far away into different countries, we can't be running to fix them because we need them to buy our film every year. So we ensure that that machine is absolutely bulletproof and reliable. How many countries are you in now? We're in so many countries, it's hard to keep track. Of course, we're producing this film in a very far away place in China. But uh, from next year on, we want to start producing here in, in, in Limerick. And what's it like What's it like for all the family working in the one business? Like, I, I, I'd say you never... <laughs> guys, I'd say, I'd say you never have a row or anything like no, that. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Someone has to remain the boss, you know, you have to call... The <laughs> I know the bosses. <laughs> we all know who the boss is. <laughs> That's understood. <laughs> Irish entrepreneurs are competing and winning on the global stage. I arrive in Loud to meet a man who tops the leaderboard in a truly international field. My God, don't say he's done it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so close! <laughs> when Patrick Joy founded Tank in 1995, the company made just one type of liquid tank for use on oil rigs. Now, SureTank is a global enterprise, designing and manufacturing products in seven countries, including Ireland, Thailand, China, and Brazil. 
Patrick spends a lot of the year travelling the world. So when at home, he likes to relax on his putting green in the back garden. <sighs> Great effort. Patrick, where did the idea of the putting green come from? Well, I'm an inveterate golfer, and I keep talking to my kids about the odd birdie that I have on a Sunday morning. So I went away on a business trip, and I came back, 60th birthday, and they had set down the putting green for me. So I have to get more practice on it, I think, now. That's a good effort. That's it. That's it. Well done. <laughs> you do a lot of travelling, Patrick. I do, yeah. To all those places where they drill for oil, for offshore oil. West Africa, Brazil, Gulf of Mexico, Newfoundland up in Canada, and uh, now Southeast Asia and Australia. If you're operating an oil rig, you've got to bring an awful lot of tools and equipment out to the platform, and you've also got to bring a lot of liquids, production chemicals. So the tanks are used for that, and the containers and the baskets are used for all the tools and then the skips are used for bringing all the waste products back. This equipment really works in very severe environments. So we certify the equipment to minus 40 degrees C, but it also has to be able to operate at plus 40 degrees C. And we have to be absolutely sure that there's never going to be an accident, that a weld isn't going to fail, or there isn't going to be a pollution incident. So in essence, the oil drilling companies yeah. would not be able to operate without, without your tanks? No, without our equipment, no, they wouldn't. Not in a safe way, not in a safe way. How many have you employed now? Just over 600 group-wise, and in Ireland we have about 135 at the last count. Oh, very close. <laughs> We're not the cheapest by any means in any of the product lines that we do, but I'd say we have a better name and a higher profile than anybody else who is trying to get into the business, and that's been really key for us. And the other thing is we create a product and a brand name, and that's a very important thing. So the people are not just buying a tank anymore, they're buying a sure tank. Just left of that blade of grass. <laughs> Look at it! <laughs> See, I'm a good teacher. You are a good teacher. <laughs> Next stop on my entrepreneurial odyssey is the small town of Callan in County Kilkenny. Well, we're here to meet a man whose business is definitely bringing home the bacon. John Walsh, a chartered accountant, became the MD of Callan Bacon in 1985 after the company was bought over by his parents. The business, dating back to 1925, was then located in an old building in the town but the company was losing money. So John set about transforming the business, moving it into a new facility. We bought a five acre site about half a mile from where we're standing. We wanted to keep the business obviously as Callan. We would be one of the largest employers in County Kilkenny. You're a qualified accountant. Are you sorry you left the profession? Well, I was financial director of a large company in, in the UK. Counting what someone else did became boring at the end. I wanted control of my destiny. In business, you must have a feel for what's right, and then you must back those feelings. We were in the rasher business, and we could never win a contract. We just didn't have the equipment to do the job. But we didn't have the business, so unlike the accountant we talked about, I decided to buy the equipment and hope the business would come. And yet you didn't have the business for the equipment? No, no. I reckoned I'd get the business. Uh, again, the feeling. Again, you backed yourself I to backed myself to be right. The 13 million euro investment has helped increase Callan Bacon's turnover to 60 million euro. And with the aim of opening up new international markets, John purchased a Clonmel-based company, Ribworld, in 2010. Bacon is easy to sell in the UK and in Ireland. But once you go further abroad, there is no tradition of bacon and cabbage or rashers for breakfast or anything like that. Rib world is an international taste. You know, you can do the ribs with uh, hoisin for Chinese, you can do them Texan for America, and you can sell them all over the world. You're very interested in bringing the buyers from all over Europe here to Callan to see Callan Bacon and to see your premises. When they come and they see how we operate, they see our traceability, they see how close we are to our business, how strong our management team are, I think they go away thinking this is a company we should be associated with. Oh, looks like I need a lot of practice before I meet the next entrepreneurs.
Liam Church and Finola Higgins were both working for Unpost when in the late 1990s they spotted a market for streamlined postal service software. Their company, the Escher Group, employs 200 people and their products are now used worldwide. Liam and Finula are married with three grown-up children, with table tennis a regular pastime for the whole family. Well done. This, this was going to be a friendly game. When it comes to sport, you have to win. And even against your son. Yeah, he's old enough now to know. She's very competitive. She likes the table tennis, she's good at it, and she likes to show how good she is at it. <laughs> <laughs> and is she like that in everything in life and business? I would have to say most things, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Escher software is used at post office counters all over the world, enabling staff to work with one PC where previously they used four. The one customer can send a parcel, buy a retail item and pay their bill all in one transaction in the counter with our software. What you see from the outside when you buy a stamp is not what the post office is. It's a much bigger business. It's the biggest retailer in every single country. Escher's latest technology has been designed for use with mobile phones. In participating outlets, it allows customers to pay for products and to build up loyalty points. But postal service software remains at the core of Escher's business, and they have 35 clients worldwide. The biggest one is the United States Postal Service. Um, they're the largest retailer in the world, and they use our software. That's worth $50 million. Tell me how you got that. We won that in the face of you know, seven of the top companies in the world. Our reply to the tender was 10,000 pages, and we delivered. How do you balance all of that with family needs and, and all of the other requirements you have in life? The big thing about it is we're very good about being at home at weekends. Not talking about work at weekends. We wouldn't survive if we didn't do that. Are they always this tough to beat? Uh, Will they ever give up? Oh, you'll be here in a while. Did you bring a sleeping bag? <laughs> yeah. We should be really proud about these group of entrepreneurs who are the job creators of today and job creators of the future. These are Irish entrepreneurs that have had a dream or had a vision and they've decided that they're going to grow a really big business. They don't see boundaries and borders, they see the globe as their market. In part two, we meet the final four visionaries competing to be the entrepreneur of the year.